Quote number one, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. This means that a truly educated person always accommodates any kind of thoughts but does not accept them or follow them blindly without questioning them. In a day, we get hundreds of thousands of thoughts but an intelligent person does not accept every thought. He or she also tries to understand the reason behind a particular thought that comes to mind. Thoughts that come to mind can either be positive or negative. Every thought has to be entertained because if resisted against a thought, it will come more and more often. One learning from this is that thoughts must be accommodated but not accepted until questioned. Quote number two, anybody can become angry. That is easy. But to be angry with the right person. And to the right degree. And at the right time. And for the right purpose. And in the right way, that is not within everybody's power and is not easy. This means that anger is a natural emotion which can show itself at any point in time and anywhere. But what an intelligent person must know is that how to use that anger. Anger must be taken out at the right situation. Additionally, it must be of the right intensity. Furthermore, it must be there for the right reason. Moreover, it should be used in the proper way. This is something which is not possible for many people in the world because it requires intelligence, patience and above all self-control. Quote number three, there is no great genius without some touch of madness. This means that every person in the world, who has a unique way of looking at the world and who is super intelligent, has some degree of madness and craze ingrained inside him or her. This touch of madness is there because their spectrum of seeing is somewhat unconventional and the society around cannot understand what they are doing and saying. These people live their life in their own way and work in their own way to come up with something that is unimaginable for the world. Whatever they create is a masterpiece because they put their heart and soul into it. Quote number four, well begun is half done. This means that the beginning of something is the most difficult part. Once you begin well, you will definitely shine in the future. Most of the people cannot start something because they are too scared of the unknown. They don't actually know whether they will be able to do it or not. But those who are able to start are always at an advantage because the journey after the start is relatively easy. One important thing to learn from this is that we should try to get a good start in whatever it is that we want to do so that we can carry on the good work after that. Quote number five, pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. This means that whatever we do, if done with passion, will take our work to another level. To explain this, let's take an example of an painter. If a painter is really passionate about art, he will try to improve each and every part of the painting whether it is the background, the colors, the brush strokes etc. He or she will try to understand each and every part of his or her painting as deeply as possible. This really makes the art a masterpiece. Leonardo da Vinci, an amazing and a really passionate painter, took many years to make the Mona Lisa which even in his time was unbelievably amazing and mesmerizing. So one learning from this is that we should love what we do and find pleasure in our work which will automatically show in our work. Quote number six, the aim of the wise is not to secure pleasure, but to avoid pain. This means that a person who is wise enough will always be looking forward to dodge pain as much as possible and not indulge in pleasure. Pleasure if understood correctly is a trap which people often fall into and it is a bottomless pit which never ends. So indulging in pleasure may be satisfying in short term but is suffering in long term. Secondly, pain is something that can never allow a person to achieve complete freedom. So it is wise to stay away from pain because it is suffering in the short term and the long term. Even if we talk about physical pain when your body is in actual physical pain, you don't have any other thoughts in your mind at that time. So pain won't allow you to do anything. Quote number seven, good habits formed at youth make all the difference. This means that good habits should be developed at an early age because they can actually have a massive impact in your life. First of all, good habits require a lot of effort to be developed. Secondly, even if someone is successful in developing them, they are really hard to stick to. Sticking to them actually means that you have to do a lot of practice and train your mind to act a certain way. For example, if a person wants to quit smoking, he or she would really have to apply himself or herself to stop it. 
Cigarettes are really addictive and addiction are really hard to overcome. So it is better to struggle at an early age and build good habits instead of developing bad habits and suffering for your whole life. Quote number eight, wishing to be friends is quick work, but friendship is a slow ripening fruit. This means that friendship is a long-term and slowly building process. Wanting to be friends with someone is kind of a normal thing but actual friendship is testing and involves ups and downs. It is a kind of relationship that includes helping the other person when everyone in the world is against him or her. Building up a long-term relationship requires an understanding between two people and even sharing tastes and preferences and similar experiences is a plus point. Even if all of this is put together, friendship takes time because getting to know the other person is a time-taking process. Wanting to be friends with someone quickly is most of the times based on first impression. But real friendship builds up in the long term. Quote number nine, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. This means that when individual parts of something are considered, they may not have the same value as that of the whole system combined together with all the processes working. The best example that can be given here is that of the human body. Our body is made up of cells, tissues, organs etc. But combined together, it is perhaps the best creation that nature has created. When combined together, there is a kind of magic that is not explainable in words. Some combinations are so unique that they create something that may be of another level altogether much greater than individual parts. Quote number 10. All human actions have one or more of these seven causes, chance, nature, compulsion, habit, reason, passion, and desire. This means that all actions that a human being takes, directly or indirectly depends on the following factors, chance that is people tend to take action hoping that there is a chance that something will happen. Secondly, there is nature that is people tend to act based on their nature that is their conditioning or their natural inclination. Thirdly, there is compulsion which is that people act when they are obligated or forced to do it. Next, there is habit which is people tend to act based on their habits which have been developed over the years. Next, there is reason which means that there is a reason or cause which is driving them. Next, there is passion which means that people tend to act when they are really passionate about doing something. Finally, there is desire that is people act when they have a certain wish or want for something. All the other causes in the world for actions are somewhat part of these seven causes. Quote number 11, the aim of art is to represent not the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance. This means that art intrinsically is not about the outward appearance but it is actually about what's interesting inside. If we take an example of a book, there is also a very famous quote on this, never judge a book by its cover. This means that it does not matter how beautiful the book is from the outside that is the cover, how it is designed. What actually matters is that how wonderfully the book is written which is the inside of the book. That is real art. Same goes for a product as well. True art is how the product inside the packaging is made. A person who actually recognizes the inner beauty of an art is definitely somewhat an artist. What we need to understand in this is that we should not judge thing from the outside but we should look at what's inside.